Hello, Carl. Welcome you here at our headquarters. It's great to, to see you here again. And it's, I think it's a, a first great pleasure to see you here, but uh, we have a you know, surprise. You already got it on your hands. So. Yeah, no, no, nice to be here. It's always good to come here because uh, you're giving me new toys. Yes. <laughs> but I must say, honestly, I got it already before the time. So for testing and uh, I'm really impressed of the new ROX 12.1. Uh, uh, yeah, you created uh, a nice toy. So what, you, you know the 12.0 the already. So what was your first impression when you do the unboxing? Yeah, the first impression, this is the design. I mean, it's new, modern, and uh, it looks, for me, it looks super cool. And uh, when I put it on the bike, uh, I was really impressed how it looks. So, yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, we spend a lot of time to really to, to squeeze it as much as possible because this, we saved almost 20% of the size of the length of the device because this was a little something which we get uh, as a kind of a complaint of the 12.0 since it's too large too big and uh, our focus was to make it as small as possible so if you take a look at your uh, screen at your display that you almost see only the display more or less like on the smartphone is the display got a little bit bigger or the same size at uh, 12. It's the same size. Same it's, size uh, yeah. it's if you make a side by side comparison, it really looks like the new one is a bigger screen. Yeah. But this is just because of the the footprint. So the you don't see big borders in, at the side. So it's everything is shrinked, um, and so that's why it really looks like it's a little bit bigger because there's less plastic parts you can see. Exactly, and I, I think uh, that was important uh, to make it from the surrounding the around a little bit smaller yeah. and just pick a new design speech yes it's now a real bike computer so before that we got some people who told the 12.0 like a smartphone or <laughs> nokia you know, it's a little bit funny and we, we got it and so that's why that's the result of it you spend a lot of time to really squeeze it uh, as much as possible uh, but without losing any any comfortable functions like the buttons are still there so especially if you uh, wear cloths or something, you can handle it on, you know, I don't have to describe you uh, the mon for mountain bikers. It's yeah, honestly, I'm a little bit old school. I mean, uh, I like also to, yeah. to use it uh, on the screen, mm -hmm. but uh, with the gloves, I use also the, the buttons. Sometimes, okay, I'm a little bit more on the road bike, but also on the mountain bike. But if you just are on the handlebar, you can just take your fingers. You don't have to leave your handlebar. You can especially in winter. Yeah, especially in the winter time when you have the big gloves. Yes, yeah, <laughs> it's easier. Right? So um, you mentioned so one thing you you mentioned already the the display. So we had a brand new display as well. It's uh, same resolution like before, but it, it's how to say it's brighter and it's. Uh, the optical performance is better than before, especially if you take a look at the maps. I think you already tested it in, yeah, in our uh, forests here over here. We have a lot of trails. What what do you think about that? Do you like it? Yeah. First of all, uh, I like how you you get uh, the tracks on the device mm -hmm. because uh, yeah, I'm using the Sigma Ride app, and uh, I really like it because it's super easy. And um, so I got uh, the track uh, with Commode, mm -hmm. and then I just put it on the Sigma Ride app, mm -hmm. and then on the rocks, uh, it was super easy. Mm -hmm. And then the maps, I was really impressed. You could see all the trails around. I mean, in the Palatine Forest here, yeah. where I ride the most, yeah. uh, you have a lot of trails, even some self built trails. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was following the, the, the track and then I saw some trails going down somewhere. I said, oh, okay, I'll just leave the track yeah. and go down. Yeah. And then uh, the rocks navigated me back to the original trail. So that was quite impressive, yeah. yeah that's a good thing, yeah. This is one of the benefits <coughs> for sure if you have a map uh, and also routable maps on, on your device. So you never get lost. So even if you see, oh, there's a, like you mentioned, there's a nice trail, just follow yeah. it. and. End of the day, you, you have a whole view, okay, where I have to go back. But even you don't have to think about because you get the navigation and turning guidance as well. Exactly. 
Yeah, and the other thing is also um, because it's directly live connected to my mobile phone. Mm -hmm. So if I if I go to a crossing and then there are like two or three trails going in one direction, so you can't really see on the on the map where to go. You just uh, show your arrow where to go. So I take my phone mm -hmm. and quickly zoom in mm -hmm. because on the phone it's just a little bit easier and mm -hmm. faster. And then because it's live connected, yeah. you can go directly into the right trail. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. That's that's a concept of the device so that you are not only relying on, on the device, usually it, it works fine, but like I mentioned, in special situation, and you're not really even, would like to check if you follow the track or even take another way. And so, uh, yeah, the whole system is prepared for that. So that you can take out the right ad, zoom in, take a look at the surrounding, uh, even more far away. And for sure, your phone has a bigger screen and uh, it's easier to handle. It's much more powerful. Um, but if you would use the smartphone, for sure, you would try the battery. And that's exactly why we have this device, which have the maps on it. It's optimized for, for your uh, consumption, uh, that you take your phone for security reason, for example. Um, crash alert uh, is a special feature for security. So yeah, I think that's, <clears throat> that is also very important. I mean. You can be unlucky and crash somewhere and maybe you can't move or break your leg or yeah. anything. I mean, that happens quite a lot. Yeah. And then it sends a crash alert. You're safe. Yeah. Oh. So your emergency. Yeah, imagine. It can save yeah. your life end of the day. Yeah, yeah, it can. Especially in the Palatine Forest, like you mentioned, uh, if you're not in the weekends or during the week, so then there nobody's there. people. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's, uh, it's really... Sounds funny, but at the end of the day, it's a really life-saving feature. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and I was riding like battery life. Mm -hmm. I was also very impressed. I was uh, maybe five, five and a half hours yeah. on my bike, and then uh, I had still 70, 71 percent left. So well done on the battery. Yeah. So we, yeah, for sure, we, we take this in account as well for from the uh, 12.0 as well. So we took everything, all feedback we got from the. Uh, model before and take it very seriously to make it from all dimensions to review everything again and to make the best out of it and so battery life is also one of the key points for sure if you're it, using this device it is for, for people who are riding maybe the whole day like yes. and uh, using the navigation system mm -hmm. so if they're doing a uh, tour over the Alps or somewhere else or when i'm going for my 300 kilometers yes I need to make sure not to maybe bring another battery pack. Absolutely. Me. I just use it. Yeah. yeah, very important. You mentioned you are using a lot of tracks. So is this your preferred way to do your navigation? Or are you doing sometimes just uh, you select the point to go somewhere and follow the navigation? So what is your preferred way to navigate? So honestly, um, when we're going on the weekend to the races and uh, the marathon races, uh, there are most of the time, like big loops, yes. and you get the track uh, in front before the race. And uh, so I put the track on the, on the device, on the rocks, and uh, so I'm following the track. Uh, this is the most way I'm using. But uh, it also happens sometimes you're riding, and then like after 30 or 35 kilometers, you think, oh, I don't want to finish the track. Mm -hmm. I want to go home to the hotel somewhere or anywhere. And then I'm using the the navigation system of the of the rocks, the shortcut menu, the shortcut menu and then it navigates you the shortest way to the hotel. That is super cool. That's a, a also a kind of security feature if you are really yeah out of energy. So it uh, it guides you back at the shortest way or suggested way, depending on your profile, uh, back to the hotel where you started. And so this is all from my point of view. This is also a nice feature of why you should use this kind of uh, navigation system because you are always on the safe side. So you can explore, for example, new regions. You are a lot of everywhere in the world. So I think this is also something you you enjoy if you just can go out for a ride. And at the end of the day, you have a map, everything already preloaded on your device, yeah. different countries, and uh, yeah, guide you back. Where and you it's, a, it's also good to know how many cases are left and the arriving time, 
Yeah. So if your wife is uh, asking if you're <laughs> gonna be back, you can tell her. Yeah. yeah. My device says this. Yeah. <laughs> so make sure. Make a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make, make sure. Yeah. Make sure you you come earlier. <laughs> If you take a look at the, at the training suit, maps we already mentioned, So, but what are your typical training suits? So I guess you're using at least heart rate or power meters, or what are you using? Exactly, so my favorite, I uh, have three windows, and uh, in the first window, like the, the normal information, like speed, heart rate, uh, time, average speed, and uh, the wattage mm -hmm. um, in three seconds mm -hmm. I'm using. So I, I don't like if I have too many information mm -hmm. on, on one window, um, just maybe maximum four or five. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have the next one for the, for the labs. Also like the, but even less information like a big uh, screen with mm -hmm. uh, wattage, yeah. heart rate time mm -hmm. for the lab mm -hmm. and maybe average uh, wattage. And uh, the other window I use like for all kinds of information. There it can be loaded like with maximum mm -hmm. uh, temperature, uh, uh, climbing meters, mm -hmm. all kind of all mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, that's interesting. So, yeah, the good thing about this is you can customize like you want. So if somebody is, you have, you can uh, define up to six pages, up to ten values at one page. So if you are really crazy, you can. Pull, uh, you can push 60 values. I think nobody will do this, but no, there's, um, there's so many, much, yeah. so many functions you can yeah. you can't use. You yeah. have your preferable mm -hmm. uh, functions, and then you use it all the time. So uh, also, <coughs> you mentioned now. Okay, I guess you you ride almost um, let's say the same tracks usually, or is this something? Okay, if you load a track, you will get the map information in, in additional to to your mentioned uh, training cues. Is this something which you use regularly, even if you ride the same tracks again and again? Is this something, because you mentioned you, you get the, the case to the destination, you get the time. Is this something like in the car, you see, okay, I want to beat my estimated time of arrival? Honestly, uh, I only do it in the car. Like yes. to, to beat my... Yes. <laughs> always beating the Navi. Yes, that's a, that's a kind uh, of play. Yes. No, it doesn't happen uh, happen on, on, a bike, on a bike now okay. because um, yeah, you know the routes yes. and you know obviously the kilometers and uh, the time. Yeah. Um, uh, but what I'm using is like the, the other applications like Strava yes. or Komoot, like the live segments. Mm -hmm. So if you have like good legs mm -hmm. and uh, you want to smash uh, some some climbs, mm -hmm. just to see where you are compared mm -hmm. uh, to the. Uh, past times yes. when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> Your personal so, records. <laughs> personal records, yeah. exactly. That I'm using. Um, yeah, especially also with the lab timer. So yeah. I know the, the times from yeah. the mountain and yeah. then I, I use it. Yeah, very yeah. important. Yeah, Strava is a, uh, it's a good thing. So I think I, I use it as well. So I think it's a nice game because you, you see the live segments, you see it on the screen, you can see the comparison, you can compete against the com, you can compete against your personal record, you can compete even if you're in the starting season, the recent uh, best of the recent five, so you have different um, yeah, competitors, yeah. Yeah, and so you can select, depending on your legs, like you mentioned, uh, yeah. which is the best one for today. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, very, very good functions. Ah, what also is a cool function, when I turn on the navigation system and uh, I didn't set up the, the rocks proper, like yeah. maybe you forgot some yeah. function, and then you can push uh, the screen mm -hmm. and then you can change the function. Yeah. So in the beginning, uh, there were like pre-installed mm -hmm. uh, functions and then I uh, change it to my wattage and the arriving time. Yeah, yeah that's uh, also one of the benefits of the touch screen for sure. So it's easy to handle and even during the ride, like you mentioned, if you forget something or even if you change your bike and you forget to change some settings for, especially for this bike, or you have a new sensor set or something, yeah. you can easily do this on the right, on the screen, or even on the right app. So the right app is also a, a key factor of the new system. So the Rox 12.0 doesn't have any support of an of app in general. Now we have the right app support and it makes the whole system even 
more easy to use because we was able to kick out some some features from the Roxy itself and put it to the Ride app, which makes it much more comfortable in the usage. So that means if you end the Ride, for example, it will be transferred automatically via Bluetooth uh, to your Ride app, and the Ride app is able to share it to Strava, to Training Peaks, like we mentioned. This is something, uh, so we get already some feedback that it, it, there are less items, so it looks like something is missing, but if you are searching for something missing, you don't will find it. Is this something you discovered because you know the old one as well? Yeah, the, the big benefit is definitely the Sigma Ride app. It makes uh, everything so much easier and so quick, and it's very, uh, yeah, it's initial. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you get it very, very quick. Um, no, I must say I, I found everything uh, what I needed. So. Um, no yeah. missing no, item. No yeah. missing item. Yeah, yeah. No, you guys did a really, really awesome job with the right app and with the new rocks. Okay, so I think this is a very good overview. Thanks for being here, and uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, yeah to your feedback, which is coming soon. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited to test it now on all the races, and uh, and I'm very excited to look at this beauty.